Welcome back to The Musing Greg. If you're looking for a high capacity lithium battery with Bluetooth that's a drop-in replacement for most lead acid or AGM units, the iTech World 160X Pro might be just the ticket. In November 2024, I purchased and reviewed two iTech World 120X Pros, the 120 amp hour version of this battery. My test rig was still assembled when iTech World released this updated 160 amp hour model a couple of months later, so they sent me a few units free of charge to run through the same unbiased testing process I did with the 120s. Now, if you're instantly thinking, oh yeah, these would be specially tricked up units to get a good review, I can say that having done this testing alongside the 120s I bought privately, I'm confident they're all standard off the shelf units. But if you're skeptical, the tests are all here with the results so you can make your own judgment. As you know from past reviews, I test every product with the same unbiased scrutiny regardless of whether the product was bought, borrowed or donated. So these products will be getting the same testing and scrutiny as every other product on my channel. In many respects, this looks like a 120X Pro just with more capacity, so I'm not going to touch much on the things that haven't changed. The physical size, the Bluetooth interface and its compatibility with non-lithium chargers. If you want detail on any of that, check out the 120X Pro review. Today we're going to focus on the changes around packaging and weight, whether you can add these batteries into your existing 120X Pro system, but most importantly, is that claimed capacity for real? Is this an upgraded battery that really delivers the 160 amp hours they claim? Or is it the same old 120 amp hour unit with a new label, or a battery management system that overdrives the old cells just for marketing purposes? The packaging on the 160X Pro has been updated from the 120s. Instead of a brown cardboard box, it's now got a classy looking black laminate, which I think looks nicer. The bag of battery terminal bolts is now prominently positioned at the top of the box, where in the previous model they were concealed inside the packaging deeper down and were easy to miss. The instruction manual is the same, as is the rest of the packaging which is more than adequate. So just a few incremental improvements here, but good to see. I also got the compatible battery trays. These are well packed too and include a strap to secure the battery to the tray. The tray itself is nice solid powder coated steel with a few strips of cushioning foam along the bottom and some holes for securing it to the floor of your vehicle. It's certainly the easiest way to install them if you don't have something already in place. The physical size of both batteries is the same, but because of the increased capacity, the new battery weighs in at about 16 kilos compared to about 13.5 for the old model. In my last review, I was critical of iTech World for claiming the 175 amp 5 minute discharge rating which my 120X Pro unit simply didn't deliver. The specs tab on the 120X Pro page has since removed that claim, and it doesn't appear on the 160X Pro page either, so good job iTech World for taking on that feedback. Instead, they now just list the same 150 amp continuous discharge rate, but have upped the 5 second maximum from 270 amps to 430 amps. The only other spec change of note is that the lifespan rating of 5000 plus and 10,000 plus cycles has reduced from 100% and 50% depth of discharge respectively, down to 80% and 40%. They still advertise a 100% usable capacity, but are obviously recommending you don't run it to empty all that often, which is pretty standard good practice for lithium batteries. Okay, same test setup as last time. Positive coming out of the battery, going into a 12 volt fridge. Output of the, the negative from the 12 volt fridge comes through into the smart shunt. The output from the smart shunt goes back to the negative of the battery. And we've also got this red wire from the positive of the battery that's providing power to the smart shunt. We're going to use that to be able to provide um, in, input from the Victron app to be able to measure the total discharge capacity, as well as we'll be comparing that with the ITEC World app. Well, it's the morning of Saturday, the 22nd of February. So firstly, battery 2031. We've had it on charge overnight with this power supply and the iTech World app shows that it's fully charged with safe mode and the charge isolator activated to prevent overcharging. So we know this battery is as full as it can get. So let's now start the discharge test. Okay, that's running flat out now. You can see straight away on the iTech World app, since we're drawing about Five and a half amps or 5.3 amps coming out, 73 watts, that's about what we'd come to expect. Of course we have dropped out of safe mode now, that happens pretty much as soon as the charge is, is disconnected. About a day and a half later the battery was close to being empty. As you can see the Victron app says the battery has delivered 159.7 amp hours so far which is encouraging. Both apps are showing a battery voltage of about 10.95 volts and because the battery voltage has dropped we're now only drawing about 3.8 amps of current. It took a further 25 minutes from this point until the battery actually cut out, so we'll run this and fast forward and you can see for yourself what happens. Okay, 
Alrighty, righty-o, the discharge oscillator has just activated. We've got 161.2 amp hours, and at that sort of capacity, with the discharge oscillator, you can see it will come on here. Discharge oscillator safe mode, we've got down to 9.32 volts, and those cells are sitting averaging with 2.33 volts, ranging from 2.26, that was up to about 2.45. I recharged the battery with my Victron Blue Smart Charger until it went into safe mode again and ran another full discharge test. I was away for a couple of days so couldn't capture the shutdown live, but on my return I found the battery had gone flat and brought itself back out of safe mode. The history tab of the Victron app showed battery 1 had delivered 162 amp hours this time, which is a slight improvement over the first test. I did one final test of battery 1 following the same process. Fully charged to safe mode, start the test, And we're underway. And then let it run. Okay, so it's one uh, twenty-one twenty-nine, Friday twenty-eighth of February. We've got zero percent remaining on the iTech World app, zero amp hours, and we're just going to drop into this view here so we can see when the discharge isolate activates, when safe mode comes on, and what our voltages get down to. Cells are looking empty at the moment, 2.47 to 2.38, 2.37, 2.48, it's a bit of variation in the cell voltages there. So we're going to hold the view there, and you can see 9.67 volts, so we're getting very low on voltage. There we go, safe mode. 163.2, 9.08 volts. These voltages are all coming back up. Look how low these got. 2.25, 2.24, 2.35, 2.35, 2.35, bit of variation in the cells. So the best result so far from this battery is 163.2 amp hours. I repeated the same tests with the other two batteries and got pretty similar results. So now you know the process, I'll zip through these in about a minute just to give you the highlights. Now onto battery 2025. Sunday the 2nd of March 2058, 160 exactly. All right, we're in charge now. Tuesday 4th of March 2016, it's just gone into safe mode. Again, 160 is what it's showing on here, 2.1 kilowatt. Wednesday 5th of March, 9.30 in the morning, battery's been on charge overnight, and it's now showing 100%. Thursday 6th of March 2151, 161.3 amp hours. So this is our last battery test, battery number three. 02033 Wednesday 19th of March 11:30 battery is down to 0% 162 okay slightly more than the other ones 24th of March 1835 we've got the charger on 14.4 volts and that's exactly what we're sitting at here Wednesday 26th of March 1118 down to 0% let's check what the Victron app said we got to 161 amp hours Here's the full list of test results for nerds who like stats, and I'm just going to give you one 60 second example of where this can be valuable, so stick with me. The question is, why doesn't the battery management system shut the same battery down at the same voltage each time? Look at line 6 which we saw live. Battery 1 cut out at 9.24 volts in the first test, but in the third test on line 23 it made it all the way down to 9.05 volts. And if you look at line 42 for battery 5, this one cut out nearly a whole volt higher at 9.9 volts, although still delivered the same capacity. So why doesn't it cut out at the same level each time? Well, if you look at the notes where individual cell readings are recorded, you'll find the answer. Regardless of the overall battery voltage, in each case, one cell in the battery was sitting just above 2.2 volts. And it appears that if any one of the four cells reaches this 2.2 volt threshold, the BMS will shut the battery down regardless of how much charge is left in the other three cells. So it's simply because of minor variations between the cells and that one cell is discharged a bit quicker and touched that 2.2 volt threshold while the others still have got a bit more left in the tank. And as you can see here, this is where the cell balancing stage at the end of the charge cycle is really important to ensure they all at least start off with the same charge. If the BMS was able to do cell balancing towards the end of the discharge process, you'd probably get another few amp hours out of them. So if you love data or just want to verify what I've reported for yourself, pause the video now and rejoin the rest of us when you're ready. Now given these batteries look so similar, you might be a cynic and wonder if this is just the same old 120 amp hour unit with a tweaked BMS that sneakily drives the old cells harder so they can flog the same old battery at a higher price. <laughs> 
You know, and this is why I love testing products like this, because conspiracy theories can be put to bed where they belong, and factual, impartial testing can settle the truth for everyone. So if you value the time, expertise, and testing it takes for me to answer these questions for you, please consider hitting that thanks button down below to help cover a few minutes of my time. Now the great thing about having done these same tests on a previous battery is that I can interrogate my old files and answer questions I didn't even think to ask last time, rather than having to cut the battery open. And this is what I discovered deep within clip number 25 from the old 120X Pro review. Alright, 10.48. Okay, so the cells got around to about 2.3 to 2.6 volts. One. While I can't see the cell voltages, I'm reporting one cell at about 2.3 volts not long after the 120X Pro BMS cuts out. And since we just saw the 160s doing the same thing, it means both batteries are cutting out at the same depth of discharge rather than the new ones being driven harder. So that myth is debunked too. These are not the old 120 amp hour cells just being driven harder. This is definitely a legitimate 160 amp hour battery with larger internal cells. One final test I ran was to put a 160 amp hour battery in parallel with one of my old 120 amp hour units and see if they cooperated. Now if you're new to this, running two batteries of the same voltage in parallel means the amp hour capacities get added together, so this should deliver a total of 280 amp hours. See my series on electronics the basics if you want to learn more. Now as a general rule it isn't recommended to mix different batteries in the same system, but these were both fairly new and the same brand so I still wanted to test it. But I'd also heard a rumour that the BMSs were different, and that the 160 amp hour unit would only deliver 120 amp hours if run in parallel with a 120X Pro. Well this wasn't what I found. Running a 160X Pro in parallel with a 120X Pro delivered 289 amp hours, which from my experience would have been 161 amps from the 160 and 128 amps from the 120. The BMSs did come out of safe mode at different rates, and the discharge current from each battery varied, sometimes one was delivering more than the other, but the overall result was what I expected. That said, iTechWorld got back to me and confirmed that they don't recommend doing this, as the BMSs are apparently different, so I would say that this is something to undertake at your own risk if you feel inclined. So has the Bluetooth app changed? Well, in a word, no, which is good and bad. Good in the sense that it's really helpful to be able to see the exact battery voltage, current and power, cell voltage, total number of cycles importantly, and other battery behaviour like safe mode. When I recently bought this caravan which had the old 105 amp hour iTech worlds installed, I quickly realised how much I missed having no way to determine anything about the battery state of charge or how many cycles they'd done or anything. It had a battery monitor sure, but was that accurate? I just had no way to tell. That's where the app is really good because it does at least give you some information. But the bad aspect of the app having no changes made to it is that the 160X Pro BMS still just uses battery voltage to determine the state of charge remaining percentage, the amp hour remaining figures, and the green shading on the battery cells. For example, I fully charged this battery up to safe mode again, and after about 24 hours into the second discharge test, the Victron app showed 104 amp hours have been drawn off, so we can easily calculate there's only about 35% or 56 amp hours remaining. But the iTech World app still said there was 85% and 136 amp hours remaining because that's what it's programmed to display at 13.09 volts. Four hours later when we'd drawn 122 amp hours from the battery, the state of charge and amp hours remaining both inexplicably dropped to zero when the battery voltage was at 12.98, but a few hours later they came back to normal as the voltage dropped further. Again, I saw this issue with the 120X Pros. So check out the 120X Pro review if you want a detailed review of all the features of the app, but as I said there, one, I hope iTech World can improve how it calculates things for future releases, but despite that, two, the ability of this app to show what's going on inside is still a big plus over having no app at all. The iTech World 160X Pro is a capable battery that delivers on its claims. In the eight tests I ran, each of these three batteries met or just passed their 160 amp hour capacity, although not by as much as the 120X Pros. 160 amp hours of usable capacity is pretty impressive from a 16 kilo battery. An AGM battery with this much usable capacity would weigh over 100 kilos. So if I needed a high capacity deep cycle battery for a caravan or vehicle, I'd be very happy to choose these batteries. Of course, if I was doing that, I'd be foolish not to get the best price possible. So if you'd like this battery or any other iTech World gear, make sure you use coupon code MUSING at itechworld.com.au as you'll get a further 5% off whatever price they're showing, including sale prices, and you'll be supporting this channel at the same time. So please like, subscribe, comment, or send a thanks if this video has helped you decide which battery is best for you. But that's all for now, so I'll catch you next time.